Hi everyone, my name is Asis and I am currently working as a software developer at Amazon in the US. In this video, I will share with you how I cleared Google Summer of Code, also called GSOC, with just one month of effort, despite not having any prior open source contributions. I will take you through a step-by-step -step process you can follow to maximize your chances of getting shortlisted. I will also talk about how to select organizations and walk you through my project proposal which got selected. I applied to GSOC very late during the final semester of college, but it turned out to be one of the most rewarding experiences of my college years. During this internship, I had the opportunity to contribute to a project that is used in popular platforms like YouTube, VLC Media Player, and web browsers such as Chrome. I also had the chance to contribute to one of the Netflix's open source project called BMAP. Additionally, I received a generous stipend which made the whole experience even more enjoyable. I strongly believe that every college student should give it a try. If you are unfamiliar with GSOC, it's basically an international annual intensive program organized by Google. It pairs students with open source organizations to work on specific software development projects for a duration of 3-4 to four months. The main objective of GSOC is to promote open source development. It provides students with an opportunity to be part of something larger and contribute to projects that could potentially be used by millions of people. Now, why is participating in GSOC important? There are five main reasons why I believe you should participate in GSOC. First is, you gain real-world experience. GSOC provides an opportunity to work on real projects for real organizations, giving you valuable hands-on experience in software development. Second is, it enhances your technical skills. By participating in GSOC, you can improve your coding skills, learn new technologies, and gain exposure to industry best practices. Third, it expands your professional network. GSOC allows you to collaborate with mentors and fellow participants from around the world, helping you understand your professional network and build connections within the tech community. And the fourth, it boosts your career prospects. GSOC is a valuable addition to your resume and is highly regarded by employers as it demonstrates your ability to work independently, meet deadlines, and contribute to open source projects. Plus, if you successfully complete GSOC, Google provides you with an opportunity to interview with them within the next six years. And the last, it pays a good stipend. I hesitated to apply to GSOC because I lacked open source experience and feared getting rejected. However, when I entered my final year of college, I decided to give it a try since it was my last chance to apply. I ignored it completely during the first semester of final year and only started taking it seriously at the start of second semester in late January of 2017. During the first few days, I spent some time learning about version control and Git. Since most projects are hosted on GitHub and involve multiple contributors, you need to be familiar with version control system like Git to be able to contribute and create pull requests. To learn Git, you can read the official documentation or watch videos on YouTube. There are plenty of them. Once you have a basic understanding of version control and Git, it's time to understand which tech stack you want to work with. The GSOC program offers a wide range of projects including web development, machine learning, operating systems, science and medicine. You can find projects related to almost any popular tech stacks like C++, Java, Python and JavaScript. I had trouble deciding which tech stack to choose since I was familiar with multiple programming languages at that time. To make that decision, I reviewed the list of organizations, explored their websites and documentation and eventually found one where I could start contributing. The project I contributed to involved programming in C and C++ where I had to implement low-level programming concepts like pointers and callback functions. If you are already good in a particular tech stack, I recommend sticking with it and search for organizations that use the same tech stack. This will make it easier for you to understand their code base, documentation, and make meaningful contributions. After deciding on a tech stack, start shortlisting organizations. At the beginning of the GSOC program, organizations themselves go through a shortlisting process. While the list of organizations changes every year, many of them are selected repeatedly. Review the organization list from the past three to four years and identify the ones that have consistently been shortlisted. Select two to three organizations from the list based on your interest. Since I started very late, I didn't have enough time to contribute to multiple organizations, so I selected just one of them. But you can try more than one to increase your chances of getting shortlisted. After you have selected the organizations, introduce yourself on Slack, Discord, IRC, or any other communication channel they use. You can find this information on their GitHub homepage or in their documentation. Take some time to go through their documentation and code base to familiarize yourself with their project development and coding practices. The most important thing during this program is building the reputation in the community. You can do this by working on small tasks such as fixing bugs, updating documentation, or helping others with their questions. Go through their list of open bugs and issues and see if you can solve some of them and create a pull request. Make your presence felt early and get to know the people who are actively involved in maintaining the projects. The organization I contributed to had a web page with proof of concept projects that one can build before the GSOC program starts. I selected a project from that list and reached out to the mentor of that project to begin contributing. Once I had a good understanding of the project, I cloned the 
GitHub repository onto my local machine and began reviewing the code base, focusing on the part where I wanted to contribute. I set up that project on my local machine and ran some commands to ensure everything was working correctly. Few things you should keep in mind while interacting with the community are avoid asking too many questions and value their time. The people who maintain these projects are often highly experienced professionals. The mentor that I worked with was an ex Google employee and now running his own startup. It's important not to overwhelm them with numerous inquiries. If possible, try to find answers to your questions yourself by reading documentation and exploring the code base. Also, avoid giving the impression that you are only interested in GSOC, even if that is your primary motivation. Organizations are looking for long term contributors, so it's important to show a genuine interest in their projects. And lastly, follow their coding guidelines. Each organization has its own set of guidelines for writing code and documentation. Sticking to those guidelines will help minimize the need for multiple revisions during code reviews. Once you have made meaningful contributions and the project list is announced, start working on your proposal. The deadline to submit the proposal is usually in the first week of April, so you should start writing it by the end of February. This will give you enough time to include all the relevant details and revise your draft. Personally, I only wrote one proposal because I started very late and didn't have enough time to spend on multiple projects. But if you start early, you can contribute to multiple projects simultaneously and submit proposals for all of them. Aim to get at least two to three proposals in two to three organizations. This can significantly increase your chances. Now, the proposal usually doesn't matter much if you have already made a meaningful contribution to the organization, but you still need to write it. Before writing the proposal, ensure that you have established a good rapport with your mentor. Here is how I went about drafting my own project proposal. I started by adding my personal and academic details. I included my educational background, providing a brief overview of the tools and technologies I worked with in the projects I worked on and the courses I took in college. Then I listed down the different skills that I possessed. The remaining sections were all about project itself, starting with an overview of what I would be working on during the program. Since I worked on a qualification task, I included those details as well. Then I outlined the different approaches I was proposing to successfully complete the project in the implementation section. Next, I provided a timeline view, breaking down the task on a weekly or a bi-weekly basis to complete the project on time. Few additional points you should keep in mind are, make sure it's well formatted and doesn't contain grammatical errors or typos. After finalizing my proposal, I sent it to my mentor for review. He provided some feedback. My mentor played a big role in getting me shortlisted for GSOC and I learned a lot from him during the program. After submitting the proposal, there is a one month gap before the results are announced. However, it is recommended that you continue your contribution during this period to maximize your chances. You don't have to contribute in a significant way, but you can still answer questions, fix small bugs, and participate in the discussions. One thing I really like about GSOC is no matter which college you are from, anyone can participate. So do give it a try. So that's about it for GSOC. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I wish you all the best. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.